In this video, we're going to look at uh, domain and range of some basic parent functions. Now, we've already done videos on the parent functions themselves. If you want to look at characteristics and uh, what the parent functions look like, you can find those in other videos. Here, we're going to focus on domain and range. Now, starting here with some of the basic ones, and then we'll have another video that will show you a little bit more advanced parent functions. Let's start right here with the linear parent. Probably the first one that you ever encounter in algebra. Uh, rather simple. Remember that domain is quite simply what are the x values that are allowed in the function? What can I substitute in for x right here? Or if I look at my graph where I see the line, what x values are defined on the graph? Well since there are arrows at both ends of that line, we know that any x is allowed. And if we look at the equation itself, there's no number we can't plug in for x and get a value for y. We could use a negative number, a positive number, zero, fractions, decimals, it doesn't matter. All will work for the domain. So we say that the domain of this function is all real numbers. I like to use that symbol uh, with a little double bar for an r. Uh, now, what is the range? Well, the range is, given the values of x, which remember x is independent, we choose it, once we do, what are the possible answers we could get, or the possible y's? Well, again, since y is always equal to whatever x is, if we can use any number for x, obviously there's a possibility of getting any number for y. So the range is also all real numbers. Now, I want to show you how to write this in uh, set notation, first of all. Sets have uh, brackets. I'm not very good at drawing them, but that's pretty close. And what we can do is we can say the domain is the set of all x's. We use a little bar like this. means such that x is an element of, it's like a, a little bit like an e here, the real numbers. And it's called set notation. We can do the same thing with the range. We can say the range is the set of all y's such that y it's also an element of the real numbers. And that has no restrictions. All real numbers count here. I'm not sure my double bar there looks very good. And so that is my that is that written as set notation. Uh, another notation uh, another notation that you can use is called interval notation. And it works like this. Parentheses says doesn't include this number. It starts at negative infinity and goes all the way to positive infinity on x. So that would be my domain. And then if I wanted to write my range in interval notation, starts at negative infinity and goes to positive infinity. Now I used the parentheses on each end of this to say it doesn't include that number because you never include infinity. Uh, if there were a range that included a number uh, but the other side didn't. Anytime you include the number, you would actually use a bracket like that, but it doesn't apply to this particular problem. Let's look at the uh, domain and range for another one here. This is the quadratic parent makes the parabola. Uh, this one is a little bit different. Let's look at the domain first. The domain is all of the possible x's. Is there any number we can't put in for x? Well, I can use negatives. I can use positives. I can put zero there. I can put fractions or decimals. So the domain is all real numbers. But here's where things change a little bit. When I try to do the range, what are the possible y's I can get? Well, looking at the graph, you'll notice that there's never any part of the graph that goes below the x-axis. So in fact, the range is all the y's that are greater than or equal to, because y has a, a zero right there, zero. Now, if I wrote that in set notation, it's the set of all x's, it's, this is domain, such that x is an element of real numbers. Ah, but now let's look at set notation for y. For the range, y set of y's such that y is an element of the real numbers, comma, but y is greater than or equal to zero. Like 
that. So you can see that when we do this, it's a little bit different. Let's look over here at interval notation. Again, the x's are the same. x goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. But what about y? Well, y starts at 0, but includes 0. So I'm going to put the bracket here to show that it includes it. And it goes from 0 all the way to positive infinity. So y could be any number. And notice I closed it with a parenthesis, not a bracket, because we don't include infinity. It could go anywhere from 0, including 0, all the way to infinity. So it didn't include the negative numbers as part of the range. Um, square root parent function. Notice what the graph looks like here. If we're going to do the domain of this one, then the domain starts at 0, but it never includes the negative numbers. So we can say x is greater than or equal to 0 for the domain. What about the range? What do the y's do? Well, y also starts at 0, but is never down here anywhere. Uh, so y is also greater than or equal to 0. So we'll write set notation for the domain. It's the set of all x's such that x is an element of the real numbers. Not written very well. But x must be greater than or equal to 0. Or if we want to do the range, it's a set of all y's, such that y is an element of the real numbers. But y is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, what about in um, interval notation over here? What if I do this? Uh, domain starts at 0, includes 0, but goes to positive infinity. Doesn't include infinity. And the range, again, starts at 0 and goes to positive infinity, like that. Uh, x cubed. y is equal to x cubed, the cubic parent function. It does some interesting things. First of all, is there any x that we can't have here? Is there any domain that doesn't work? Well, no. We can use negative numbers. We can use positive numbers. They can all be cubed. Uh, so let's take a look at that one and say, all right, um, must be all real numbers. What about the range? Well, actually, the range does the same thing. We also get... Uh, all real numbers here for the range. So I'm going to write this one in set notation. Domain is the set of all x's such that, just like before, x is an element of the real numbers. And y also, you can get any number, set of all y's, such that y is an element of the real numbers. So this is no different from what we've done before. Uh, set notation, interval notation would be x and y would be the same here. All the x's from negative infinity to positive infinity, and all the y's from negative infinity to positive infinity. And finally, in this one, let's take a look at the cubed root of x. Again, it looks like an s kind of laid down flat on its side, but not a lot changed here. If you notice that, even though it looks different, the domain, all the x's are still included. There's no x you can't put in there, so it's all real numbers. And the range is also all real numbers. And we would write them in set notation or in interval notation exactly as we did the previous one. Uh, and we could use it the same way. So that includes, uh, those are some of the domain and range for uh, some of the algebra functions that you use for parent functions. If you want to see others, please go to my website at mymatheducation.com 
and there's another video that will include some more domain and range of some more complex parents and uh, there are other videos there as well organized by topics I also invite you to join my YouTube channel at my, Mag my math education and I appreciate you watching the video and hope you'll come back here and watch others uh, to help you with other topics thanks again